goodness of God, we've come to have a great time in Jesus today. Our God is so awesome. He's so great. He's so magnificent. And we've come to lift up his name. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, we come to lift you up. We've come to give you praise. God, we're asking God that you rain down on us today. Bring down a fresh anointing. Bring down your fresh touch. Somebody needs you right now. We all need you right now. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs salvation. Somebody needs deliverance. And, oh, God, we just come to uplift your name and give you praise. In the midst of everything going on around us, God, we give you glory. Oh, God, for you are great. Oh, God, and we just give your name the praise in Jesus precious name. Come on everybody wherever you are. Come on and lift those hands and begin to worship. Oh! How great
Oh, come on, can we sing it one more time? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hey, I worship and worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, just want to tell you, just want to tell you, hey, I'm going to let you know, I just want to tell you, you've been better to me than I can be to myself, just want to tell you, yeah, 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 yeah. just want to God, right where you are, I want you to just lift your hands. I don't care where you are, in the car, in the living room, in the back, it doesn't matter. Come on, just pray, just lift your hands. With a thankful heart, give thanks. God has been too good to us. For us to be complaining, for us to be in distress, for us to be stressful, depressed. Come on, give thanks. Remember last Sunday, I told you, whatever he placed in your hand, you bless it. And you give it and do what God has told you to do with it right now. Come on, just give thanks with a grateful heart. Just give thanks. Come on. Father, we thank you this beautiful Sunday afternoon. We are thanking you for all your blessings seen and unseen. We are thanking you for your hand of protection being upon us, upon our children, upon our families. We are thanking you, Father, for allowing us, God, to bless what you have placed in our hand this week and for us to be obedient and do with it what you have told us to do. And, Father, the miracle signs and wonders, God, that, uh, that has come through, that has been told, that has been inboxed, God, I thank you right now for opening doors, Father. The little bit, God, that you have placed in people's hand, they bought houses this week. <laughs> uh, to open doors this week, cars this week. Father, we thank you now for all of your blessings, seen and unseen. Allow us to always stay in faith. Allow us to always keep moving, no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, no matter what may come our way, 
We will stand on your word, Father, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, that we are more than conquerors. No weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper. We are blessed in our going in. We are blessed in our going out. You have given us houses that we did not build and vineyards that we did not plant. We speak it. We stand on the word. We receive every promise that you have released through your word. And we thank you now we count, count everything done in Jesus' name. Amen. Right where you are, you say amen. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you, praise team, for bringing us back into a spirit of gratitude. Bringing us back into a spirit of thanksgiving. Bringing us back into a spirit of reverencing God. That's one of the things that God has really been dealing with me on. That's one of the things that God has really been dealing with me on this week. And I, I, I just got two points, and then I'm, I'm going to let you go. You know, uh, we got to head, we heading back to uh, Charlotte. Right after this, we got to head back to Charlotte. We got to pick Isaiah back up because they get out a, a week or so for uh, the holidays for July the 4th. All right, so you pray for us again. But I want to leave you with something. Just stay right there, Brother Anthony. I ain't going to be long. Just that, that, that's, that's in my, as they say, that's sizzling in my spirit, you know. And I just got two points, and then I'm going to let you go. I want to thank everyone for your Father's Day wishes, your Father's Day, Father's Day love. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everyone for how you took care of Pastor Rashida for her birthday on the 23rd. Thank you so much. See, that's how you know a church is mature. When the members do, when the members do, regardless of who stands and say, this is what we're going to do for our pastor, the members already had it done. That's how you know your church is grown, your church is mature, because they don't have to wait on anybody to tell them, this is how we're going to honor our man or woman of God. They already had it done. Regardless, that's how you know your church is mature. So thank you for your love that you've shown. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the cash apps. Thank you. Me, me and my wife, we never really expect anything from the church but for you guys to love God and to love people. That's the only thing that we care about, reaching, loving, serving. So anything beyond that is gratitude. And always, like I told you, God will never forget about your labor of love. So I speak a, a, a hundredfold blessing over your life a hundredfold blessing over your life before how you are showing the love of Christ, not just to myself or my wife, but to people, to God's people inside the church, outside of the church. May a blessing overtake you and your family that you cannot shake off. <laughs> Woo! That you can't give, even if you try to throw the blessing off, it's going to stick to you. That's what we're talking about. That's it. I love you, Jesus. Yeah. That's it. Y'all gotta forgive us for a minute. Just wanna tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. More than anything. I love you, Jesus. Ooh, Let's go hard for Come on. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I worship and adore you. Come on, just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Whoa!
have to forgive me. I, I, I got two points, I'm going to let you go. But that's, that, that hit me. Because I shouldn't be standing. I shouldn't be walking in the levels of prosperity, the levels of faith that I walk in. I shouldn't be. But I understand that I was taught at a young age. My mom, my dad, my grandmama, they taught me and my they, brothers and sisters, they taught us as a young age to root ourselves in Jesus Christ. To root ourselves in the love of Jesus Christ. To root ourselves in the church. And no matter what's going to come our way, because things are going to come your way. I am already preaching. Things are going to come your way. But if you have been rooted on the foundation, if you have been rooted in Jesus the Christ, no matter what, the song say the, the winds may blow, the, the breakers may break, you know, oh, but what do you say? I, I've been hold fast. My life is anchored. That's an old song. That's an old song my granddaddy used to sing. That's all. My soul has been anchored. My soul has been anchored. You may take my house. You may take my car. You may take my business. You may take my bank accounts. But you will never take my... My soul has been anchored. No matter what it looks like. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Woo. I gotta move on. I gotta move on. Let me let me let me let me leave you with these two words. Y'all stay in that vein. I'm gonna let y'all close that back out. Because it it goes with what God gave me to talk about today. See, you gotta understand when myself, the praise team, when we all get together, you have to understand the spirit is leading this thing. The spirit is leading. That's why you got to be careful who you have in your circle. That's how you got to be careful who's around you. That's how you got to be careful who's moving in and out. Wow, we got to be on uh, uh, same. The Bible said there was in one uh, uh, one mind and one accord, and suddenly there came a sound. If we're not right, this is what happens on Sundays. It's because we are in one mind and one accord, and the Holy Spirit starts moving. So what I'm talking about, they song not knowing what I was going to talk about. I just want to leave you with two. I want to talk to you about this. What to do when the foundations are being destroyed? What to do? What do I do when it seems like my foundation is being rocky? When it seems like my foundation is being tested? When it seems like my foundation is being chiseled? When it seems like my foundation is being broken or stripped from me? What do I do? Because we, in, we, we live in a time in our lives where our foundation are being tested. We have went through some of the most difficult days that a lot of us have ever seen. I buried so many of my loved ones I, this, this past year. You know, there was a whole lot of people that walked. There was a lot of churches that shut down. There was a lot of my pastor's friends who gave up pastoring. Because it seems like everything was being destroyed. Because I, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. Because if you're not careful, if you're not careful, if you're not careful as a preacher, as a musician, as a psalmist, as a drummer, as it doesn't matter what you do in the house of God. If you're not careful, we could get caught up in Hollywood. We could get caught up in stuff because, you know, everybody, oh, God, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. You know, all my pastors that I know and all these people, they're trying to look like Hollywood so they could get likes on Instagram and Facebook. So we are, we are stepping into the pulpit with, 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 with earrings. We are stepping in the pulpit with shorts. We are stepping in the pulpit. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with it. But, I, I, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with it. But it comes a time in our life when the foundations of the word has to be unwavering. It comes a time in our life where the holy sacraments cannot be played with. There comes a time in our life 
where, you know, uh, us, we cut off the Facebook and the Instagram. It has to come a time in our life where we get back to kneeling at the old-fashioned altar. And that's, that's it. Because that's the world we live in today. We are being tested. We have been, the foundation seems like they're being broken. It seems like nobody wants to come to church. It seems like in this last year, it seems like now people will rather just chill out and then come back into the house of God. But how many of us know, I raise my hand, that if it hadn't been for Jesus, I would not have made it. If it hadn't been for Jesus, I wouldn't be standing here. If it hadn't been for his healing power, I would not have made it. That's what it's all about. So, Pastor, what do I do if it seems like my foundations are being tested? What do I do? Number one, you turn to God. Number one, you turn to God. You turn to God, not to Buki, not to Shaniqua, not to Uncle Robert who's a drunk, not to Oak. No, no, no. You turn to God. You don't sit at home. You don't turn on Lifetime. You don't turn on ES. You turn to God. When my foundations are being tested, what, like David said, just when the doors of the church is open, You turn to God. I'm seeing it every day that we are turning to stuff that doesn't matter. Your social status does not matter. Your car doesn't matter. Your house doesn't matter. What matters is, that's why the Apostle Paul had to say, what profits, what profits a man to gain the whole world to lose his soul? people who committed suicides driving a Bentley. I know guys who committed suicide living in two, three million dollar homes. I know guys committed suicide with five, six million in the bank. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his soul? Because it doesn't matter if you are on Poor Street or Gold Boulevard. Your foundations will be tested. And if you have not turned to God, you will turn to drugs, you will turn to women, Men, you will turn to all kind of nonsense if you will turn to God. When your foundations are tested, you turn to the one that can help you. You turn to the one that can get you out. You turn to the one that can lift you up. You turn to God. Go with me to Psalms 11. Psalms 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 7. I got one more point and I'm done. That's why they call it. They said for the choir director. This is because that's what David was. He went more. He said, I trust in the Lord for protection. Now, you got to understand David. Understand David. I, 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 I'm going to go. Understand David. David was a mighty warrior. David was a mighty warrior. David had mighty men. That's why the name of our men's ministry is Mighty Men of Valor. David men had issues, but they could fight. Okay, stop. Okay. That's why I love, okay, how can I say it in a good way? That's why I love God people around me who say, but they still got some hood in them. Uh, David was, his mighty men could fight. That's how they made their money when they was running from Saul. They were mercenaries. David, David boys could fight. So David really didn't need nobody to protect him because his boy, think, David was sitting down one day and David said, oh, to have a drink of water. From, uh, uh, it was, I can't remember the name of the well. He wanted a drink of water from a well. His boys heard it. They fought their way to the well, grabbed the water, and fought their way back without spilling nothing and gave it to David. That's how bad they was. Oh, you want some water? Yeah, we got to fight. Oh, don't worry about it. They, no, you got to say something. They fought their way to the well, turned around, grabbed the cup of water, and fought their way back. 
That's what David had in his circle. So for David to say, I trust in the Lord for protection, David was saying, I know all these people around me can do this and they can do that, but I still put my number one trust for protection in God. Your money ain't protect, gonna protect you. Your car ain't gonna protect you. Your house ain't gonna protect you. Your business ain't gonna protect you. What is gonna protect you is Jesus the Christ. That's what he's saying. So why do you say to me, fly like a bird to the mountains for safety? That's my second point. My point number one is, my point number one is, you have to turn to God. My second point is, don't run. My first point is, you got to turn to God. My second point is, do not run. Where are all these running away Christians at? First sign of trouble, you run. First sign of this, you run. First sign of that, you run. First sign of this, you run. That's what David, David said. Well, why, why are you telling me to run like a bird to the mountains? That's why the Bible said, in this life, you're going to have some trouble. In this life, thank you, you're going to go through some valleys. You could be, good God, you could be worth $40 million still going through a valley. You could be worth $40 million still dealing with this. You could be worth $40 million still dealing with that. You could be worth $40 million, guess what? All the money in the world ain't going to get your kid off a of crack. All the money in the world ain't going to keep, keep your marriage together. All the money in the world, because you are going to have some valleys. You're going to have it. So where are you running to? Where are you running to? That's what he's talking about. Verse 2 says, the wicked are stringing their bows and fitting their arrows on the bowstrings. They shoot from the shadows, and those hearts are right. The foundation of law and order has collapsed. What can the righteous do? Keep going. But the Lord. Here we go. But the Lord is in his holy temple. He said the Lord is in his temple, the church. The Lord is in his temple, your heart. The Lord, that's what he's saying, is in the whole. The Lord still rules from heaven. He watches every one of us closely. Where are you running hiding to? Where are you going? He said he still see you. Examining every person on earth. The Lord examined both the righteous and the wicked. He hates those who love violence. He will rain down blazing coals and burn and suffer on the wicked, punishing them with scorching winds. For the righteous Lord loves justice. The virtuous will see his face. So when the foundation is being tested, you turn to God. That's what David's talking about. You don't run. If you feel like running, you run towards him. Not away. Not away. You run towards the altar. You run towards the Christ. You the cross. You run towards the church. Not away. That's just what's going to heal the foundations of the church the foundations of the family, the foundation of the community, the foundation of the state, the foundation of the, you, the world, that's what's going to heal. We have to have Jesus the Christ. Now, next Sunday, we all coming back together. I expect to see everyone in the house of the Lord. There is nothing you got going on that's more important than coming in here, lifting your hands, and saying, I love you, Jesus. 
There's nothing more important than you coming in here, lifting your hands, saying, God, you're worthy. I, I, I'm sick of this thing now where we can't do this and that, but we're going to movies, we're going to vacations, we're going to this, we're going to, only in the church. Put, put a mask on your face, put whatever you, but come sit over there in the corner with my soul if you have to, but you need to be in the house of the Lord. Because this is where our healing takes place. This is where our healing takes place. This is where our healing takes place. This is what God has said. Come on back. I have, I have healed the land. Come on back. Because your blessing is in this place. The blessings that you're looking for is sitting right here. It may be sitting beside you. That's what it's all about. Come on. I love you, Jesus. I'm going to go home. This is where the vein that God has me in. I know I'm sounding harsh as a pastor, but this is my season as a pastor to be harsh. Because God is holding me responsible for your soul. He's holding me responsible for your life, your spiritual life. So I have to speak to you the way he's speaking to me. Children of the Most High God, it's time for you to come back to the house of God. It's not about an offering. It's not about none of that. God has been good. It is about you being built up in faith. It is about you being built up in encouragement. You need it. Your foundations are being tested. Your foundations are being tested. Your foundation is being wobbly. Come in here where the master builder is and let him smooth it out. Let him get it back right. The chief cornerstone. Let it all be put back together. Woo, I got to go home. I actually hit the road, brother. But this came from my heart. Turn to God and stop running. Trust God. Trust God. Father, I thank you for this word that you release to your people. God, as we get back in faith and do what you call us to do, we are going to stop worrying about stuff we cannot control. We are going to stop stressing out about stuff that we have no control over. We are going to stop stressing about things that we can't solve. And we're going to start lifting our hands we are going to dog put our trust in you and we are going to run back to your church and we are going to put it at the altar. For you are the good shepherd. Ah, for you are the good shepherd. For you are our shepherd that we shall not want. You make us us a lie down. You lead us beside still waters. You restore our soul. So Father, we get back on it. Fix our foundations so we can stand strong and that we can stand tall for your kingdom. We have a mighty work to do. As a church, as individuals, we have mighty works to do in your name. This community needs us. We are thanking you for your face and your light shining on us. Let us get back in place. Huh? Let us put our hands back to work. In your precious name. Amen. I expect this house full in Jesus' name next Sunday. I know we're preaching it, doing it like this. But when we do open the doors of the church, every other Sunday I declare each seat filled with the children of God. I speak it. I speak it. Woo. I don't have to tell you about giving. You know what to give. You know what all uh, the uh, cash out breath of God church is. You know it. It be at the bottom of the screen. You know what the address is. You know how to give. You know how to support. You know how to pay your tithes. I'm not going to preach to you about that. You do whatever God's told you to do. If he didn't tell you to do nothing, then don't do it. But don't be expecting nothing from him either. That's real talk. It's time for us to stand on that foundation that God is building. Got it?
God bless you, breath of God. I will see you next Sunday with a pack house. And we are going to the, we are going to shout, we are going to run. We are getting back to where God wants us to be. God bless you. I love you. Speak this with me. Speak this with me. I am the hand. I am not the tail. I am more than a conqueror. No weapon that is formed against me shall be able to prosper. You throw your hands up and scream it in your house. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Thank you.